Now in studio to break it all down, CEO of cybersecurity company Saigov, Yair Solo. Yair, thank you for your time. Thank you. It's quite mystifying when these uh, cyber experts crack these codes. When uh, outbreaks like this happen, what, what does it take? Is it a race by everyone and anyone to try and stop it? Well, and I think that uh, people are racing, trying to stop it, both individuals and companies. But I think the more important point is, is actually what's done beforehand. And, you know, trying to track it down once it's too late is, you know, a step uh, too late. It's not what's going to protect you from the uh, next attack. And I think that governments, entities, companies, and you mentioned a whole bunch of them a second ago, um, need to take proactive steps of looking at it with a holistic and strategic view and not just this tactical view of trying to solve problem by problem when it comes up. All right, what do we know so far about who is responsible for this attack? So it's very little. We know so far it's very early on, and in general, cyber attacks, and we've seen it throughout the world. You can see it through different countries uh, with you know ramifications on political outcomes and so on, where it's very hard to identify in uncertainty who is the actual attacker. Um, and bec that's because uh, these attackers spend a lot of time and a lot of effort to cover up their tracks. So it's only when they actually make a mistake in the code or in the language and they leave some trail, and that's when slowly you can uncover who might be behind it. But even then, often those are left on purpose, and therefore it's actually misleading companies or governments to think it's a certain attacker and it's not actually them. So what's missing, I suppose, in the process of, of identifying the culprit? What do we need to do to improve our uh, protecting methods? So I think that, uh, I go back to what I started with, which is that holistic and strategic cyber strategy. If you don't actually take a step back and look at it with this holistic point of view, similar to what Israel has done over the last five years, where they've changed the entire approach to cybersecurity, they understood five years ago that if you don't take a look at cybersecurity, starting with threat intelligence, looking at things like physical physical security, the human elements. I mean, you talk about the insider threat today in companies, 44% is the number that they talk about that that is the a number of people involved in attacks on companies. So companies, governments are putting up millions and millions of dollars to try to protect themselves when somebody might walk into the office and plug something in. And that's why you have to have a much more holistic approach that also looks at technology, but ties it all together with an overcompensating strategy that puts it all in place. And how is the face of this changing? As we know, we've heard about lone wolf hackers, uh, which are uh, most common, and now we're hearing about state-backed hackers. Yeah, so I think it's actually the opposite I was actually looking at. I would look at it, the state actors used to be the ones with the, you know, really outstanding tools and capabilities. Mm -hmm. And what you see now is a, is, a, is a trend where, you know, lone wolves and individuals have, you know, the equivalent of an F-16 or a fighter jet in their hands to attack other countries. And that's why we see more and more of these threats. Right. And that's why they're not going to just stop. They're actually going to get worse. And they're going to, you know, spread to things like critical infrastructure and things like that. We already see some of that today. And I think that that goes back to the strategy. You need to have a strategy in place to make sure you're are addressing not yesterday's attacks but tomorrow's threats. And is the threat moving faster than we can protect ourselves? It certainly is today. I mean the threat is definitely moving at a faster pace than most people are trying to that are you know succeeding you know protecting themselves and I think that part of you know taking a step back and assessing your current readiness level is that first step of trying to get ahead of the game and not constantly try to play catch up. Okay, looking at the companies that were targeted here, for me at least, the Australian uh, chocolate factory Cadbury really stands out. How do the hackers choose their targets? So, I, it, again, it's very early, so it's hard to, uh, I, you know, say with certainty that Cadbury's was tar uh, targeted to begin with, or are they just another victim because it's a very widespread attack? We certainly see that the attack has spread throughout the world to various industries and various countries. We actually see more of uh, focus on in the Ukraine, so you might, you know, think that that was the target. But often these attacks also cover up something else that we're not even seeing it. So it's very hard to know at this point, really, are, you know, what we're seeing is this is just the first phase of a more advanced attack, or were those the actual targets? Yeah. So I think just that, on know, that point of covering sure. up something that we're not seeing yet, what do you mean by that? So again, there could be you know that this is a step one. We're getting a, you know another exploit into place, which is uh, targeting a more critical or more uh, you know important uh, target. That you know this is all part of a cover up. And again, you know, it's too early to say with certainty whether that is true or not. But mm -hmm. there definitely is you know a look at that angle as well as you move forward. Now we look at states coming together to protect their countries from these hackers. In fact, most recently the United States and Israel with this enormous cyber security partnership. How does this translate in practice? So I think that uh, it translates in practice to the fact that the only way to combat the cyber um, you know, threat 
is, you know, is a, with a global cooperation. The attackers are collaborating with each other, they're learning from each other, they're taking tools that come out of government sometimes that leak out, and therefore the only way to actually properly address it is for countries to get together and to start fighting it back with a joint and collaborative effort. I think that, you know, the collaboration between Israel and the U.S. is a great first step, but there needs to be a much wider scale. If you look at global terror today, there's much more of, uh, you know, international collaboration when it comes to the fight on terror, uh, and I think cyber terror needs the same exact approach uh, in order to actually combat it. Many would say that Israel is a leader when it comes to cybersecurity, unfortunately born out of fighting crime, but could this be a good thing for Israel's economy? So again, you know, it's you know, it's the the bittersweet outcome of attacks like these that, that you know Israel certainly has the talent and innovation here, which uh, you know can definitely help the rest of the world. So I think that's that's the, the you know the good side. The downside is that it's coming at the expense of attacks around the world, and that's something that you know companies like ours are trying to bring that right. knowledge and experience built up here in Israel, so that others can actually enjoy and have their starting point five years ahead and not start you know with the pain points that we had early on. Yeah, Irsoli, thank you so much for that insight here on Debrief.